Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. It's great to have you here with us as we uh, prepare to worship. And uh, I must say, you are looking very well. Look at you. You look beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, it's great to have you here with us. Why don't we stand together? I'm just going to uh, lead us in a time of prayer as we prepare our hearts to uh, focus in on Jesus, focus in on uh, worshiping our Lord and our King. Hallelujah. Let me, let me pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you this morning that we are together, that we are here in this place in unity, uh, fused by the Holy Spirit. And this morning, Lord God, we are just so blessed to be called your people. We are here together in unity to worship you and to lift your name high above our lives, above our church, above our city and our nation, Lord God. And Lord, we invite you to come and encounter each, every, each and every one of us this morning. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. gave your life for mine. You gave your life for mine. Nailed to the cross, you crucified all of my sin and shame. It was washed by your mercy. You are the treasure I my reason for living so let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy oh praise to the lord most high oh praise to the one who saved my life oh praise And you stole the gates of my heart. The veil in between was torn apart. Now you hold the keys to the grave. Cause you bring things to life. You roll stones away. Oh, praise to the Lord most high. Oh, praise to the one. Oh, praise to the one who saved my life. 
that we are able, let it be to the glory of our King. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We'll exalt you, Lord.
because you're with me. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. Father, we honor you today. We thank you, Lord God, that you're a God that is our peace. Amidst everything, Lord God, we have your peace that surpasses understanding. Thank you again for the gathering of your people, Lord God. We come to worship you and honor you today. The opportunity that we have, Lord God, to serve our God with worship and praise and gratitude of heart and thanksgiving. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for friends. Thank you for fellowship, Lord God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you're mighty in the midst of us, Lord God. And we bless you. We exalt you. We give you honor and glory and praise. You're a wonderful Savior. You're a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you, Father. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Say hello to somebody. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my Fantastic, you can find your seat again. I do want to remind you that following the service this morning, there's going to be uh, some morning tea, a cup of coffee or tea out in the uh, lounge, that's through the doors to the left. So if there's someone you didn't get to catch up with, someone you perhaps wanted to uh, just uh, chew the fat with, then I want to encourage you following the service, please grab them, take them through for a cuppa. But right now we're going to take up the offering. Hallelujah. So let's uh, prepare our hearts to give. Let me pray. Loving God, this, uh, this morning, we are together in you. We are together in unity, Lord God, and we are blessed to be called your people. Lord, this morning, Father, we have spent our time and spent our focus worshiping you, lifting our voices to you. And Lord, we continue our worship now as we give, Lord God. We give because we want to see your kingdom extended. We want to see others come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, just as we have. So Lord, this morning, bless the gift and the giver as we give in your wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Just as the bags are being passed around this morning, I have a couple of notices. So hopefully you picked up your weekly bulletin as you came through the door. So this is your opportunity to get it out and have a look. Okay, so get whip it out there. Check it out. Uh, welcome to everyone who's watching via live stream as well this morning. We welcome you to church. We pray you are blessed by our time and worship this morning and uh, that you are uh, blessed where you are, where you are at. Uh, you can check our bulletin out online through the church website, which is www.fcc. .net.nz, and you can check that out there. Just a couple of things I want to highlight to you, of course. Uh, first of all, school holidays are coming up. Now, for those of us that have children, of course, 
that can be a, a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> I'm sure you're bracing yourself for having children at home for a couple of weeks and you've got plenty of exciting activities planned to, uh, this, at this winter time. So um, I know it's going to be a great time for you as a family as you uh, hang out together and stuff, but we just want to give you an update on the junior church. So there will be uh, a junior church break over the two uh, Sundays of the school holidays. So on Sunday the 17th and 24th, we won't have a children's church program per se. Um, so just so you're aware of that, just to give our team a break. But we are looking for some more junior church uh, workers. So if you can help and provide some time to uh, get in behind uh, that ministry, it's a really important part of our, our church family, looking after our children. And we do need help with that. And, uh, and so if you could uh, be involved in that, please come and see the office or myself or Pastor Fear. And we'd love to chat with you and talk about how you could be involved with the junior church. But it's, uh, it's a great ministry. Uh, Rose, is Rose here? Why don't you give Rose a hand? Just come to share a notice this morning. Good morning, church. Um, my name is Rose Ansley. Some of you will know me. Some of you actually won't. But I've been a member of this church for 40 plus years. Oh, my goodness. Okay. To start. Yeah, I know. A bit scary, eh? Um, to start. We have a lady called Sandra King who has written a book called To China. Amazing lady, amazing book. Um, I'm advertising it in church because we've forgotten to do it in the past, but, but read the book. Read the book, man. You'll get inspired to missions, okay? The second thing is we have a ladies' prayer group. Sorry, I have to speak fast. On a Friday morning, we've been going for six plus years. We started out from a, um, a vision, I guess, of a lady who has since passed, Marge Green. Um, there was a chap who stood in church at her funeral, and I remember him saying, it will take three, it will take three to pray like she prayed into the heavens. And so we've started this group, and we've been going for this long period of time, but we would love, absolutely love, to have more women come and join our group. It's at 10 o'clock on a Friday till 12 o'clock. Women play, you pray differently. You pray with heart and soul and emotion. You pray, and we go into that room without any understanding of what we're going to pray for. But I tell you what, we come out so strong from that group after we've been in it because God is moving. And in these days, in these days, I tell you, we need to be praying fervently for our children. The other thing is that this group also wants to put again together a calendar, a missions calendar. No, not for the money to go to overseas, but to go into your homes. We um, sense that we all pray, but we pray vaguely about missions. We sort of say, oh, bless those missionaries in that country, in that country. But we don't have a lot of information, so we want to put this calendar together with information on our missions, okay? Their visions, who they are, where they are, all those kinds of things. So we will have a table out in the foyer. We have been blessed by a bunch of ladies in our Whanganui community with knitting, and some beautiful things for little ease. So next week, bring your crumbs. And I say bring your crumbs because God will bless those crumbs. We will put a donation box on that table. If you see something that you can bless someone with, take it, put a donation in, and just go bless. Okay, so we can start this project. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rose has been part of the church for 40 years. 40 years. The Soviet Union was still a nation 40 years ago. <laughs> I think music just got introduced on cassette tapes. Do you remember those? <laughs> Everyone had a landline. Yeah, that was 40 years ago. Anyway, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Um, <laughs> another notice I want to let you know about as well, just want to keep you uh, posted about, we're looking to have a water baptism service. So if you are not yet uh, water baptised and you would like to be, and that's something that perhaps you've been thinking about or maybe you haven't thought about but you've been interested in it, you want to find out a bit more, I really want to encourage you to uh, seek out Chris at the back there. Chris, just stand up and wave at everyone. Pastor Chris, he um, is going to uh, co uh, get in touch with you and you can connect with him. And uh, we would love to see you go through water baptism. So if you'd like to find out more about that, see uh, Pastor Chris, get some information, and we will make it happen. It'll be a great time together. But that is all I have this morning. Why don't we give our senior pastor a great hand as he comes. I'm on now. We need some more workers for the children's church, especially somebody to lead that ministry. That will be great. Maria, come up here.
Thank you so much. Maria used to lead that for quite some time and uh, she's stepping down for personal reasons. But we just want to thank you very much for the time that you have spent teaching our children. We appreciate you and uh, pray that God will richly bless your life. Thank you for being part of us. Thank you. Mr. Taunton, come up here, please. Carl was leading our deacons for a while, but he stepped off because he's so busy with his work and things like that. But uh, we just want to appreciate you, young sir. And uh, thank you very much for uh, all your work and your service. Thank you for being part of us. We appreciate you and love you very much. Give them a great hand. We haven't introduced Chris formally to you, so if Chris can come up here, bring your wife. Chris is a pastor in our church now, all right? Uh, so he's a preparationary pastor, training to be ordained in a a number of years time so uh, just uh, appreciate him uh, you all right appreciate them and his wife all right give them a great hand Thank you very much. They were here for many years, then they, they decided to go to Australia, but have come home, and uh, it's wonderful that they are home again. Hallelujah. Uh, Rose, where is Rose? We thank Rose for being here all, that, all those years and, and uh, feeding the dinosaurs. <laughs> but she's not here, so... Uh, if you're here for the first time, can you stand to your feet so we can just appreciate you, please? If you're here for the first time, give them a great hand. Welcome to our church. Are the children going? All right, the children may go. Amen. Last week we talked on four, uh, four questions and three pursuits and one answer. So I'll carry on with that if you don't mind. Uh, life can be very complex. But God has a way of simplifying life. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him, regardless of their background, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their social standing, if you would believe in Christ Jesus, you'll be saved. That's very simple. Our difficulty is believing what God says. Many times we doubt what God says. Don't doubt your beliefs. Believe your beliefs and doubt your doubts. But don't doubt your beliefs and believe your doubts. And the difficulty many times is for us to trust that God is who He said He is. When He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one, no one comes to the Father. You can discuss that until Jesus returns. Jesus Himself said, no one, no one comes to God unless he comes through Christ. However great your theological understanding is, it's very simple. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. 
Not your education, not your money, not your social standing, but your trust that God means what he said. Hallelujah. So our difficulty is not that life is complex. No, life can be made simple. If we would trust the author of life, and when we don't, we go through a whole lot of messes before we come out the other side. Are you okay? So we talk about the first question, and these are questions that everybody lives. Whether you believe in them, whether you can answer them or not, your very life display the questions. The first question we asked last week is, who are you? It has to do with your identity. Who are you? Are you okay? Jesus asked the same question. Who do they say I am? Who do you say I am? But it has to do with who you are your identity, and part of that is your culture, your ethnicity. I'm Samoan, to the bone and out the other side. But before I'm Samoan, I'm a child of God. And many times people don't realize who they are because they're never connected with the one that gives them their identity and who they are. And we shared a little bit about that last week, and I think... That's enough and we can carry on. The second question is, where are you from? You may, you may say, well, I come from the Philippines. Well, it doesn't really matter. I come from Samoa, but why are you here? Where are you from? And part of that question, the answer to that question, is where you come from, your ethnicity. But it has to do with your origin. I was just reading yesterday uh, an article by uh, a New Zealand young lady who said, I'm claiming back my name. And I was, I was wondering, what does she mean? When she was young, her parents separated and her father was made to sign a document to release her from him in the sense that she will never carry his name. And uh, the mother said, if you don't sign the document, you'll never see this girl again. So he signed the document, released the girl and the mother for whatever reason. She didn't explain the reason why the mom and dad separated. But now she's old. She's about late 40s, early 50s with a family of her own. And she wants to go back and reclaim the name of her dad. What is that? She's trying to find where she originated from. And she said, I want to reclaim. And when she told her dad, her dad couldn't speak. He, his lips just quivered. He just did not know what to say. Because all her life, he knew she was his daughter. She knew he was her dad. But she was not allowed to take her dad's name. And she said, I'm reclaiming back my name. What is that? It's somebody trying to find out where are you from. <laughs> and today, many people all over the world are searching for their fathers. They're searching for where they came from. Hallelujah. Are you okay? There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came from God. Jesus said, I came from the Father. I'm in the world. I'm going to leave the world. And I'm going back to my Father. It's a search for fatherhood. You carry your Father's name. That's a biblical value. You carry your father's name. 
Many times you're named by your dad. Sometimes mom name name you, but primarily it's a it's a prerogative of the dad to name the children. They had a fight with one of my grandsons, and he said, "What are we gonna call him?" And they said, "I said his name shall be," and that was it. <laughs> Rachel tried to name uh, her. Young, youngest son, Benjamin, trying to name her him Benoni, son of my pain. And Jacob heard it and he said, no, he's going to be the son of my right hand. His name's going to be Benjamin. The Bible says, uh, to honor our fathers and our mothers and it shall be well with us. Now, Many times we put that to the children. But many times fathers need to take responsibility to model the fatherhood of God to the children that God gives to him. Both parents need to do that. So that the children grow up knowing who they are and knowing where they are from. Are you all right? Is this all right? So whether you believe in the question or not, you live it. I was listening to a, I was driving my my wife's truck listening to a talkback show. And the guy is now 68. And his father died when he was 40. So his father's been gone for 28 years. The guy is now 68. And and, uh, the interviewer said, what is the greatest need? He said, I would love to have my dad right now. The guy's 68. I want my father to be here. I miss him so much. Now whether your dad or good dad or bad dad, you are supposed to honor your father because they are your father. But fathers... You need to take responsibility for your life and the life of your family because salvation is a household salvation. And you can't send your children to church and you stay home. That's irresponsible. It's, you're saying, my children can benefit from the church, but I can benefit from myself. How stupid can that be? If you're going to uh, know the Lord, salvation is a household salvation. The Philippian jailer said to Paul in the middle of the night when God shook the jail, he said, what shall I do to be saved? Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your house. You can go through the Old Testament, New Testament, it doesn't matter where. Salvation comes to a home. And the the head of the home is the father. And the father must model to the family what God is all about. Are you alright? Say amen. amen. The third question is, Where are you going? (laughs) Are you going somewhere? Because if you don't know where you're going, then life for you is anything. You've got no aim. You've got no vision. You don't know where you're from and you don't know where you're going. So life for you is anything that happens. Hallelujah. The other question is, are you going to get there? Are you, why are you here? Are you just here to eat uh, KFC and, and oysters and pay your bills and then die? If that's all you're here for, there is something wrong with your head. Why do you send your children to school? Why do you have a job? 
If that's all you're going to be here for, to eat, drink, pay your bills and die. If that's all, what is the purpose of you being here? You're going somewhere. You come from somewhere, you are somebody, and you're going somewhere. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, I hear theologians discuss that, throw that around. He can't, I said, it'll be all right if a guru said that. But God himself said that. And God created you. Before you even arrive, he said that. And he said, no one gets to the Father except through him. No theological discussion. You just have to realize who said it. And you need to believe it. If you don't believe it, you're an idiot going somewhere to happen. I've sat in those discussions. And people quote this and quote that. I said, why don't you quote the one that created you? He said that. It's not a president that said that. It's not a lecturer that said that. It's not a professor. It was God that said that. And if God said that, that's what it means. It's very, very simple. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you okay? Now, those questions are lived by everybody. And some people don't know where they're going. You need to know today where you're heading. Hallelujah. The fourth question, I'll get to the answer shortly. It'll make sense. The fourth question is, why are you here? Why are you here? Well, I'm just here. There's a purpose for you being here. And you will never find that purpose until you find God. Many are the plans of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that shall prevail. Everything has a purpose. Nothing exists Without a purpose. There's a purpose for a husband. If you don't know the purpose for a husband, don't ever get married. You wreck the guy. If you don't know the purpose for a wife, don't get married. There's a purpose for a husband. There's a purpose for a wife. And many young people are just looking to have sex. There's a purpose for sex. And it's not having sex like a dog everywhere. You're a human being. You're made in the image of God. You should know who you are. You should know where you're from. You should know where you're going. And you should know why you're here. Now some people don't know why they're here. But they, they get paid. They go to, to work. They have jobs. Some people have to resign from their jobs to find their purpose. Your job, many people, the job is just to get an income so that they can uh, build a home, have a family, but they hate their jobs. Why? Because your job may not be your purpose. But when you find your purpose in life, you're the most fulfilled human being on the face of the planet. Hallelujah. Are you okay? The three pursuits, the first one is identity. It's the same as the first question, who are you? The second is security. People want to be secured, and people will actually kill to be secured. Some people kill themselves because they don't know their identity. They have no purpose being here. It's purposeless. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they're going. So sometimes people take their lives because they have no idea why they're here. 
If they will just find God, they will find their purpose in life. When they find their purpose, they'll be totally fulfilled. Are you all right? I don't like talking about myself because the thing goes out. But ever since I was about three, I knew what my purpose was. I think God sometimes does that. Sometimes people grow up and find their purpose. Sometimes you just know that you 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 know. When I was about three years old, I haven't even been to school. I knew I was going to preach her going to be a preacher of the gospel. I knew that. I knew that as a little boy. When I grew up, I had no idea how that was going to come to pass because I did everything wrong. Today, I'm a preacher of the gospel. I am very satisfied. Whether you pay me or not, I'll still be a preacher of the gospel because I found my purpose in life. I found my niche, so to speak. This is what God has called me to do. Whether you hate me or not, whether you love me or not, whether you pay me or not, I will be a preacher because that is the purpose for why I came. And if I don't fulfill that, woe be to me, as Paul said, Woe be to me if I don't preach the gospel. I am a debtor to everybody that don't know the gospel, that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's why I came. Hallelujah. Now, identity, security, and your self-worth. A sense that you belong somewhere. Those three needs are far more essential than you think because people will pursue those three needs more than anything else. It's, it's larger than your hunger. It's larger than your drive for sex. It's larger than any addiction. You need to be secured. You need to know who you are. And you need to know your worth. Self-worth. Now those four questions and those three pursuits have a very simple answer. It's fatherhood. Because many times we live in society where fathers are either absent or they are gone, we think that fathers don't matter. But if you go to the scriptures, the answer to those four questions and those three pursuits is exactly one. His name is God. The fatherhood of God is the truth behind all other truths in the Bible. Behind the universe is a father. It was the father that sent the son. The son came because he was sent by the father. When the son came, he said, I came to reveal the father. In my father's house are many mansions. If he were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. To receive you unto myself that where I am you may be also. But the Bible tells us that whatever Jesus did, he said, it's not me that does the work. It's my Father in me. He does the work. I don't do the work. I only do what I see my Father do. And I only say what I see, what I hear my Father say. Now, let me say this, add to it. And then we can go home. If you never knew God. If you never ever knew God. And you come from a good home. Your father in the natural. Will give you security, identity and self-worth. You would know who you are. 
Because naturally, your dad is a good dad. The only difficulty is, dad then becomes your idol, and where you're heading is not good. Now many of us, in fact all of us, have got earthly fathers who discipline us. That's what the Bible says. But today, the, many, the moment you're disciplined, something happens. And children take parents to the law and things like that. Students take schools to the law. Because the authority structure is wrecked by our educational system. And the government wants to be the parent of your child. The government wants to tell your child his sex, his gender. Gender was never meant to be determined by government or anybody else. It was determined by the one that created you and his father God. So we live in this chaos. And many times because of what's happened, we never seem to value the fathers the way that we ought to. But if fathers will arise and do the work that they are called to do as fathers, their wives will be secured, their children will be secured, their children will have identity, their children will have a purpose, they will know what they are here for. Because the household is set properly. Now, I don't think we have a perfect earthly father. No one has. And many of the problems today, I dare say, is a fathering problem. That's where it stems from. Homelessness, fatherlessness, widows who have husbands that are passed on, or they are widowed because the guy they married to just left. Hallelujah. So let me give you an answer to all your dilemmas and mine. All our earthly fathers have failed. And if your earthly father has failed, go to heaven. You got another father, our father, which art in heaven. Where the whole family in heaven and earth is named, according to Paul. You've got another dad. And Jesus said, be perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect. And when you find him, you find who you are. You find where you're from. You find where you're going. You find your security. You find your self-worth. You find your sense of belonging. Because you belong to him who created the heavens and the earth. And before he even created the heavens and the earth, he saw you, he called you before the foundation of the earth and called you his child. What is your worth? They say that the worth of something is what somebody is willing to pay for. Somebody paid for you. And he gave everything so that you and I might live. Your intrinsic worth is not in what you do, not in the house you live in. Your worth is because of the one who created you in his image. And when we went astray, he paid everything to buy us back so that we can come home again. If you're here today, you're a father. Do your work. Maybe your marriage is broken. It doesn't break your fatherhood. Still do your work. There are so many young men, young women in ministry who are looking for the same thing. They're looking for fathers. 
Fathers are known because they love children. Fathers are known because they become father to the fatherless. Find somebody without a dad and be a father to them. I often ponder on Joseph, the father of Jesus, that God in heaven entrusted his son to this man, and yet hardly anything is written about him, but everything is written about his son. He did his work, look after the savior of the planet, look after a pregnant woman who carried the savior of the planet, and when his job was done, he seemed to just disappear. Jesus could have raised his father from the dead, but he didn't. But he raised Lazarus from the dead. Because Jesus said, I only do the things that I see my father do. Maybe one day we can have a, a message on Joseph. Where did Jesus get the idea that I am meek and lowly? Where did Jesus get the idea my yoke is easy? And my burden is light. Where did Jesus get all these ideas from? He saw a man model him in whom we have to do in his everyday life. And when he came to ministry, he said, I judge righteously. I don't judge the way everybody else judge. I am meek and lowly at heart. Hallelujah. A burning wick I will not extinguish. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I know this is not Father's Day, but it's Father's Day every day. But how many women, how many wives would be so secured? How many children would be so secured if the Father would do their work? So many women today, single parents trying to raise children trying to be a father and a mother, we take our hats off to you and pray that God will continue to bless you, raise your sons to be mighty in the planet, to be mighty in life. Hallelujah. Former Prime Minister of New Zealand was raised by a single mother who was broke because the father died and sold everything to pay the creditors. The present Prime Minister of Australia was raised by a single mom. Mothers, you've done a great work. We honor you today. But fathers, take responsibility for your life, for your home, and the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. Children, honor your mom and dad. They may not be perfect. No one has a perfect parent. But while your parents are alive, honor them. And bless them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me pray. If God's talking to you, I want you to stand to your feet because I want to include you in the prayer. <coughs> Hallelujah. Father, we honor you today. We give you the glory and the praise. So much need, Lord God. Sometimes we can be overwhelmed by the needs that are there. Help us, Lord God, to go back to the bedrock of our salvation. To go back to our foundation. To find out, Lord God, what we are about. Why we are here. And build our lives, Lord God, that our families can be secured. Our families, Lord God, may know where they are heading. They will know you, the almighty God who loves the world so much that you gave your begotten son that we might be purchased back, Lord God, and redeemed from hell and destruction. I pray for everyone standing. I pray, dear God, that the word that they've heard today will permeate their hearts, Lord God, will change their lives, Lord God, and their lifestyle. Father, we pray that you will minister to them and you will touch with their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you're here today and you've never made Christ the Lord of your life, maybe you're sitting down or standing up, can you lift your hand? Because I want to pray for you. You've never made Christ the Lord of your life. 
You want to give your life to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Anybody? Father, we bless you. And we honor you, Lord. Thank you that your word never returns void. It'll accomplish your pleasure and you, it'll prosper where you send it. So, Father, bless your people. Dismiss us with your blessing. And may the peace of God Almighty, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of your Spirit be with us today and always. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday.